Hey, it's Erin. When it comes to building your ideal physique, of course, exercise selection is really important, but one of the most important things to gaining muscle is progressive overload. And I know we've talked about it in previous videos, and if you've been training for a while, you may already be familiar with it. And this typically is the increase in either reps or weight used throughout your training block. And typically you're looking at around a five to 10% increase from week to week, whether that's in volume or in the amount of weight that you lift. But what if you're training at home, for example, or what if you're training in a gym and you don't have a spotter and you don't feel confident or comfortable moving up in weight? Maybe it doesn't feel safe, or perhaps you've got a limited amount of equipment in your gym and let's say the dumbbells make huge jumps. So it can be really tough to progress from one to the next. I've got you. Today, we're gonna go over six techniques that you can use to increase exercise difficulty without necessarily going heavier. And this really comes in handy when you just can't go heavier, you don't feel like going heavier. So without further ado, let's take a look at these variations. For all of the exercises, we're gonna be using the goblet squat, and this is perhaps one of my favorite squat variations as it encourages proper form, and you can pretty much do it anywhere. It doesn't load the spine, so if you have lower back or knee issues, this can be a safer option. Now, the first variation that we're going to talk about is the split leg variation. Anytime you're able to take an exercise and take it from bilateral, which is either both legs or both arms, and switch it to unilateral, you're going to see great results with that. And so for the split squat, what I want you to think about is using a weight that is somewhere around that 40 to 50% of what you would normally lift. And then you are going to hold the dumbbell like you would in your goblet squat hold. So you've got both palms underneath the top part of the dumbbell and the dumbbell is going to be resting against your clavicle. So that's how it's going to be throughout the variations. Now for the split squat, once you think about keeping your upper body nice and tall, and as you descend to that mid rep point, your front leg and your back leg should be at a 90 degree angle. So you wanna look for that 90 degree angle on both knees. And as you switch sides, you wanna make sure that you're performing the exercise evenly from right to left. Now, a quick rule of thumb for this, if you have one side that you know is stronger or larger than the other side, I would start with the weaker or smaller side first. And you really wanna let that side dictate the number of reps that you do on the strong or larger side. And what this is going to do is over time, it's going to even out any asymmetries. And you're going to find that performing this unilateral work will make you stronger for your bilateral work. So you'll go back to the goblet squat and you'll see that you're actually stronger than you were before. Next, we're moving on to the B stance. Now, B stance can be done either standing by yourself or you can use a bench for support. And you're going to hold the dumbbell like you would in a goblet squat. And you're going to start with that weaker side or that non-dominant side and make sure that your foot is flat on the floor if you're really looking to train glutes, push the weight through the heel. If you wanna hit a little bit more quads, you can push your weight through your toes just a little bit. Now the other leg, that foot is going to be heels up and you're going to place pressure on just the ball of the non-working leg. So I want you to consider that leg where your heel is up, the non-working side. And I want you to think about doing all the work on one side and simply spotting yourself with the other side. And if it feels more comfortable, definitely use a bench. This can really help with resetting at that mid rep point. Next technique we're moving on to is partials. Partial reps is a great way to increase what's called time under tension. Now with partial reps, you have a few different options. You can either do pulses at that mid rep point where your upper leg is closer to parallel to the floor. You can do pulses at that 
in the mid range or you can do pulses in the upper range. Typically, I prefer those pulses close to that mid rep point where your upper leg is about parallel to the floor. This is going to give you the greatest stretch. This is going to give you the most muscle fiber recruitment, if you will. And if you're able to stick in that tough spot in that sticking point that most people have, then you're able to really build strength that way. And it's going to take extra time as well, which can elicit changes in the muscle or gains. Next technique is pause reps. Now for pause reps, you're just going to get into that regular goblet squat position. You will descend to the mid rep point, and then you're going to count to one, count to two or count to three. Now, if you're new to pause reps, I would suggest just a nice long, slow count of one and then going back up to the starting position. Now, pause reps are excellent for not only improving mind-muscle connection because you're sitting in the hole for a little bit, and it is also going to help increase time under tension. So I want you to just pause briefly at that mid rep point, and then you're just going to go right back up to your starting position. Now you'll find if you use the same amount of weight that you normally use and you're doing pause reps that you're not going to be able to get the same number of reps that you would normally get because a lot of times we rush through things. So slowing things down, adding pause reps is an excellent way to increase that difficulty. Next technique is slow negatives. Now this is another one that is going to increase your time under tension. And what I want you to do is get into that standing goblet squat position and you're going to really, really exaggerate the descent or that negative portion of the rep. Now, a lot of muscle changes and growth can come from accentuating the eccentric or the negative portion of the rep. And this is no different. So I want you to really give me a count of one, two, three, as you get to that mid rep point. And then you can really push that concentric. You can pop right back up if you want, or you can just come right back up out of that squat. And this has a similar feel to the pause rep in that you will find that you will fatigue much more quickly on that slow negative as well. You are going to feel every fiber of the muscle working. So you'll get a lot better at that mind muscle connection, which is excellent, especially when you're talking about posterior chain, you know, the muscles that you really can't see. If you're able to slow down and really feel them, you're not only going to get more out of that particular exercise, but it will carry on to other exercises. Our final technique is extended range of motion. Now with a goblet squat, if you're able to take your upper leg below parallel, you are increasing range of motion. You are really getting that good stretch on the glutes. And this is going to equate to greater muscle growth over time. So if you're able to do an active stretch, if you're able to really, really pull those muscle fibers, you're going to get a lot more out of the exercise. And a good rule of thumb for this is you can take a wider stance, toes out, knees out just a little bit. This is going to help you get even lower. So typically going to parallel with that upper, upper leg is good. If you're able to go below parallel, even just a little bit below parallel, you're going to recruit the glutes. You're going to have a lot more muscle fiber recruitment, the lower that you're able to go. Now make sure that you are maintaining proper form as you go below parallel. If you're not able to, I would just say use one of the other five techniques because at the end of the day, we want to be able to train safely. And if something is painful, let's say you don't have that mobility, then use the other variations. So what did you think? Is there another technique or variation that you can recommend? If so, leave us a comment below and let me know what you'd like to see next. That's it for this time. Until next time. Train smart and train hard, y'all.